guys, it's Joe. Welcome back to a supplemental guide for the rares of Mist of Pandaria. Now these rares are a little bit different. They don't have anything to do with the achievement. That's why they are set aside as their own little supplemental. The other thing is there are additional rares to what I'm going to show you here, but these ones actually drop items, which kind of ties them into the other videos that I've been doing. Now let me go ahead and show you the locations of these on the map. First one I'm going to start off with is Martar the Not-So-Smart. He actually was covered in my Jade Force video. At the time, I thought he was just completely separate, just a random rare. I didn't understand that there were many more like him scattered around Pandaria. Of course, obviously, I was incorrect on this. I will be showing you all these in the process, but let's start with Martar the Not-So-Smart since I already have some footage on him. As you can see, he's a knoll. I have no idea what he's doing out here. Maybe there's a storyline to him or something. He really has no abilities that I could see except for the gun that he uses. Now this guy does not replace any of the races in this zone that we are aware of before. All eight of the other ones are still in this zone. This is an additional one that makes it the ninth. Alright, let's skip ahead and see what he drops. Alright, let's loot this bugger and see what we got here. And it's a steamy romance novel. Hot and misty. What? Are you kidding me? An elite dropping a gray item? Now, I didn't feel like that was right, so I did a little research, and that's not what he's supposed to drop. So I came back a little later to try again. This time I brought my priest friend Cloudy along, and boom, there he drops what he was supposed to drop in the first place. Martyr's Magnifying Glass. Now this is similar to the other things we've seen so far. It's a trinket, and it summons Martyr the Not-So-Smart to fight, adventure, and frolic with you for 10 minutes. And he's hitting about between 4 and 5k, which is okay, but compared to the warrior and the puppies, it doesn't even compare. Plus, he just stands there from ranged and shoots and doesn't tank or anything like the warrior does. And, and yes, he can adventure with me, it's walk around with me, and he can frolic with me, walk around with me, because that's all he does. Alright, we swing down south, still in the Jade Forest, to Fixul Lonely Heart. He is a goblin warlock right in the starting area for the Alliance. All right, you can see he's made himself a little home between a couple of wagons, it appears there. And there's another guy coming up behind, so I was like, well, I better take him out real quick. So here I go ahead and I just charge. Now, the only ability that I'm aware of is he will summon a succubus that will pull you towards the succubus. You'll see in a little bit there'll be a purple circle on the ground, and I believe that's the vicinity in which the succubus will pull you in if you're not within it. Of course, being a melee didn't really matter because I was going to be up in its face the whole time anyway. Alright, I finish him off. Goblins die in the most entertaining ways, I think. Get the succubus off me, and we go ahead and loot, and we have the Cracked Talisman. It banishes the user for 20 seconds. It's only used, only usable in the Jade Forest, which is really specific. It has three charges on it. it has a three-second cooldown. So, yeah. Let's uh, do a little demonstrating, see exactly how this works. Alright, so you can see I went ahead and took myself up as far as I could go. And uh, again, this item does protect you from any damage for 20 seconds. So here I drop from the sky as far as I can. You can see the debuff in the upper right hand corner. It's giving me a countdown at about 10 seconds at this point. So I'm going to hit the ground with plenty of time and no damage whatsoever. So. I really don't know why you would use this for very much. It is only you know 20 seconds, three charges. I guess the only circumstance that I could see is the one that you're going to see me in now. Obviously, I am a Night Elf. I am Alliance. That is a Horde area. So I decided to run in and see if I could go ahead and use it to prevent damage. Say if you're running away from a bunch of mobs or whatever else, and you just want to you know, get by them and not worry about having to dismount and fight them and everything else. But... Unfortunately, I found out this particular item does not work while in combat. So I was going to try again before I got into combat. It does dismount me as soon as I put it on, but still, as you can see, I'm getting hit, no damage whatsoever, and these guys were hitting pretty hard as you saw before. So, uh, not incredibly useful, but it could come in handy, I suppose, during your leveling process. All right, we're going to swing over to Pengsong. Don't mind the crabs, we'll get to those in a bit. Pengsong is a yak here in the Dread Wastes. All right, here he is. He's hanging around a lot of other little yaks, so I found that if I could just grab him and pull him back. See, even there's a yak, a couple yaks back there, uh, but I tried to pull him back to this back corner here so I wouldn't have to contend with them. Not only really like they were going to hurt me or anything, just for the annoyance factor. Now, Pengsong doesn't really have any special abilities or anything, so just DPS him down, use your cooldowns or whatever if you have to. He doesn't really hit incredibly hard, so I wouldn't sweat it. Anyway, Pengsong drops 
A tuft of yak fur. What's a yak fur? To pee with. Right, the handful of you that actually get that joke might be laughing. Anyway, the <laughs> Tuft of Yak Fur summons a rideable rampaging yak. This is a very, very fast mount. Only works outdoors in the dread waste. Three second cooldown, three charges. It's so fluffy. See, so notice that we've got a bit of a reoccurring theme here with these uh, supplemental rares that it can, these items can only be used in the outdoors in the particular zone that you're getting them from, and they usually have about three charges. So I'll go ahead and show you what this does. All right, we're going to go ahead and mount up on our yak. Now it doesn't say how long this lasts. I'm assuming it's about 20 seconds just like the other item from the Jade Force. But you can see it just takes off. You don't control it except for steering it. It's just like a bull in a china shop. I guess it helps to get around the dread waste while you're leveling, but otherwise really I just don't see the big deal about this. It's only three charges and yeah, so not a big fan of this one. Now since they're so similar, I'm going to move up to Zing up here in the Kunlun Summit. It's actually a goat this time instead of a yak, but the item is actually very similar. All right, he's just kind of hanging out up in the mountains. Now, he doesn't have any special abilities either, although he has some kind of an enrage ability, but I didn't see that it did any increased damage or anything, so I didn't sweat it. Just kept plugging away, and down goes Zing. And here we go, we have a bag of kaffa beans. Kind of sort of sounds like a Silence of the Lambs reference, but I don't think it is. Anyway, it summons a writable, but Kaffa crazed goat. This is a very, very fast mount, only works outdoors in the Coon Line Summit, and it has a three second cooldown, three charges. The bag emits a very strong odor. Ew, that's fantastic. I know it's just like coffee beans, it's just a coffee odor, but that just sounds bad. All right, just like the yak, let's go ahead and go for a goat ride. As you can see, same thing, moves really fast. You have no control except for steering. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. One thing of note to bear in mind, as you can see, I go ahead and mount up again. You can still take damage on these particular mounts, so just be careful. Here we go. For Nordia! A little Xarxes reference, and poor goat. And myself. Didn't end well, folks. So, yeah, just a little heads up and a tip. Now we head over west to the town long steps for Hugalon, the Heart Watcher. He is actually right inside the cave that is over by Yule Wildpaw. Alright, now look at this guy. <laughs> he is one of the missing watchers from the Vault of Archivon from Wintergrasp in Wrath of the Lich King out in Northrend. If you know the the Captain Planet characters, he is actually the missing watcher out of those. In Vault of Archivon, you had Earth, Fire, Wind, Water. He is Heart. That is the missing planeteer. So it is a Captain Planet reference. Of course, he's a cute little watcher with a pink bow in his hair. But let me tell you, this guy is tough. I had to solo him and it took a long time. He hits really, really hard. I didn't know if I'd actually pull it off. I actually took this guy out just after another druid failed to do it. So it made me pretty happy to finally solo this guy. But I would advise probably, if you can, bring a friend. Actually, I would bring a friend anyway because you want to have a friend around to share the item with at the end. This fight is exactly why I did a lot of these as a bear tank. Survivability is the key. Self-healing and some cooldowns and here we go. Finally, I feel so bad, look at him die. The guy is just, he's the heart watcher. He's there to love and everything else. And you'll see the item that he gives is full of love too, but I had to murder him and hell, you guys will too. That's what this guide is for. Anyway, so we go ahead and loot poor Hagalon here, and he has the BFF necklace. It offers the necklace for a one day cooldown. Okay, binds when pick up. So, you'll see what that does. Here, let me give me a demonstration, actually. And here to help demonstrate is my friend Claudia. She wanted to come and kill him as well, to see this item and, and see the fight, and yeah, just see him, because he's just so freaking cool. So anyway, she gives me the BFF necklace. You can see she kisses me. I have a little heart above my head, and you'll see the debuff in the upper right-hand corner. When you mouse over it, it says BFF, friends forever, and it lasts for one full day. Next up is Alani the Stormborn. Now, not really rare in that it seems to be up pretty consistently, but the way you actually access to fight Alani and get the mount to drop is the rarity, and I wanted to show you that, because essentially this creature is the time loss protodrake of this expansion, and a lot of people don't seem to know how it works, so let me go through it real quick. First off, let me show you Alani. She's gonna fly through here. You can see the swirling around her. That is actually her shield, and you cannot fight her until you drop that shield. That is the key to this particular mob and how you're going to get that mount to drop. The way you do that is by collecting sky shards. Now, sky shards come off of mobs in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. 
just randomly. They're a very rare drop. Now, they also come out of the Treasures of the Veil. If you're doing the Golden Lotus dailies, the last one always gives you a little bag that has Treasures of the Veil. It has a chance to drop out of there, too. But they're extremely rare, and you really, if you want to farm them, you can. But you need 10 of them to be able to create a Sky Crystal. And that will remove the Cloudy Protection of Alani the Stormborn. So that shield will drop, and you'll be able to attack it and take it down. It is able to be soloed. I've seen it before. All you need is those Sky Shards. So get to it, people. I know you want that mount. All right, that takes us to the Makura that are the lobster people all around the map. Now, the reason I was saving them for the last is that each one of these, except for Claw Lord Krillmander, drops an item that you then combine to summon Claw Lord Krillmander. That being the case, I'll try and fire through these as fast as possible, although each one of them does have a unique set of abilities. With that, we're going to go ahead over to Clamstock, who is off the coast of the Dread Wastes. All right, there you go. You can see Clamstock just hanging out. That's where he's going to be, so now you have at least a visual. The other thing is, like I said, I want to tell you the abilities they have. The main thing is each one has an ability from a class that you're familiar with. This is like the warrior. It has a slam to it. Otherwise, you just kill it as normal. All right, and dead, and we loot, and he has Clamstock's clamshell. Now, that's the key. All these little mini ones are going to drop this clamshell, which you take all those pieces, combine, as you can see the list right there, there, and you combine those to summon the Claw Lord, and he's going to drop something that you guys might use. All right, we move up north just off the coast of the Town Long Steps for Odna Rock. All right, you can see he kind of hangs out in this little corner here with these rocks. I'll go padding back and forth in that area. I wanted to give myself some more room. I don't know why. I didn't really need it, but I wanted to pull him over here. But as you can see, he does a cast, which is a water bolt. And <laughs> since Blizz still hasn't fixed the LOS situation, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to get it around, so eventually I'll fairy fire it and skull bash it and bring it on over. He also has a knockback of a tidal wave of some sort, but again, you can interrupt these things, so it's not too terribly bad. Alright, and dead, and as you can see, I used my trinkets with the uh, puppies and the warrior to be able to help in this situation, and we loot, and he, of course, has Odnorok's clamshell. Again, one of the pieces to the puzzle to unleash the Claw Lord. All right, we move up north to Kishak. He is off the coast of the Kun Lai Summit. Now, notice he has a fairly large range in which he paths around, so you will have to hunt him down just a tad bit. Also, bear in mind, there's a fair amount of ads around. You can see there's an elite crab in the background and everything else, so you just want to avoid them altogether. I just pulled them, like you see, right down here, uh, right on the water's edge, just to be able to handle them with no problem. Not sure if you noticed there, but he has a Bloodlust ability, which is just going to increase his DPS, of course. So this just becomes a DPS race and just kill him down as fast as possible. All right, and dead. And of course, he drops the other piece of the puzzle, Kishak's Clamshell. So that's all we need. We just move on. And we move on to Akalu, who is off the coast of the Jade Forest. Okay, most of the abilities I have found don't bother me too much, but this guy was a pain in the butt, simply because he heals himself. He has two abilities, a healing rain, which you're going to see go down on the ground there. I just simply pulled him out, and the other thing, though, is he has a healing touch as well, so he's like Shaman Druid thing. I don't know what the hell is going on there, but it's not difficult, it's just a pain. So just keep that in mind, you want to keep him from healing himself, you know, that way you don't have to prolong this uh, fight. Of course, and dead, and yada, yada, yada. Of course, he has his clamshell, blah, blah, blah. So, we take that piece, and we move on to the next. All right, we move down to the southern coast of the Jade Forest for Ekalar. All right, you can see he kind of pats around this little patch of land, no big deal. Now, the big one about this is he's kind of like the last one, but he doesn't heal himself. It's all about preventative. He has a frost shield, an earth shield, and he also has another cooldown that will reduce damage by 25%. So it's, again, nothing you can't handle. You just DPS your way through it. It's just kind of, again, a little bit of a pain in the butt. All right, and dead, and of course we loot his clamshell. Now we have one more left that we have to loot, and that will give us the piece that we need to summon the Claw Lord. All right, let's head over to the southern coast of Krasarang Wilds for Damlak, our last one at Damlak. All right, you can see he's hanging out in the water. Unlike the rest of them, you have to just go ahead and find him. Now, he casts some uh, Warlock abilities, like a Curse of Doom, a Shadow Bolt. He even does a Curse of Agony, you can see there as well. So, nothing you can't handle. Again, just DPS him down. Of course, and dead, and we collect his piece. Now, the good thing is where we summon the Claw Lord is not far from here. So, we're going to go ahead and take this piece and combine them with the rest and go summon that sucker. 
All right, we head a little west over to his island, and I'll go ahead and show you a little bit closer. You can see me flying towards it right here in the southern part of Cross Rang, and there it is in the middle of nowhere. Now, there's going to be a little emblem for the Claw Lord right there. You can see it, that's the little shell, and that's where you're going to do the combination of all the items to summon and do the ritual to summon to bring the Claw Lord up out of the water. Of course, the first step is we got to combine the clamshells to be able to make the item to summon him. So you just go ahead and right click on any one of them. It will create a clamshell band. Now, clamshell band as in a piece of jewelry, not a band. There's not going to be a band of lobsters and crabs and stuff come out. I know a lot of people were confused by that. So anyway, we go ahead and use the clamshell band right here and we bring out the Claw Lord. Now, just to give you a little hint as to what he drops, notice he has a little tag underneath his name. He's Claw Lord Krillmander, the Pinch King. The Pinch King. There's a pun in there, and there's a bigger pun with the item that he drops. Now, his abilities are pretty simple in that he's a combination of all the different ones we've already faced. So you're going to see a Healing Rain, you're going to see a Curse of Doom, you're going to see a Water Bolt, all that stuff. So... All the things you've dealt with already, you can just interrupt them, and he's fairly easy to solo. Uh, a lot of people say, that, you know, bring a friend or whatever else, but I, I had no problem. It just took a little time, but other than that, yeah, just keep in mind all those other abilities you've already dealt with, and you'll be fine with this guy. All right, we finish him off, and we finally get the reward for all that work of killing all those different crustaceans and finally getting this guy. And the reward is a fist weapon called Lobstmorn. Yes, Lobstmorn. Puns abound. Now it is bind on pickup, and I've been told that if you have somebody in the party that cannot use a fist weapon, they won't even see this to roll on it. So if you want to bring somebody along, or if you're a monk or a rogue, and you want to get this, then of course you can, but if you're going to be, you know, a paladin, you're not going to have any use for this, because it is only bind on pickup. If it was bind on equip, this would be cool to sell on the auction house, but it's not really hard to come by, so it probably would flood the market wouldn't be worth it anyway so but it is a pretty nice 450 eye level blue so if you want to go through the trouble to get it it you know it's sitting there those spawns aren't too bad so you should be able to get it pretty readily just have to do all that work to get to it now for those who want to see what this looks like here's the model for it it's similar to another one in the game I was hoping being it was Lobstmorn it might have a different model and have some kind of a Lich King twist to this particular model but it's it's the same as one that's already in the game, so nothing particularly special, although its teeth do move and its tail wiggles and it's kind of creepy, but it's the same as another one in the game, so eh, whatever. All right, there you go, guys. Right when you think the rares guides are over, I bring you the supplemental one. Of course, remember, these have nothing to do with the achievement. It's totally separate. These are just interesting ones that drop stuff that I thought you guys would at least want to know about. Thanks, as always, for watching the guide and, and supporting the channel the way you guys have. It's amazing. So if you can like, favorite this video, and subscribe if you are already. That way you can get updates whenever I put a video out. I do appreciate it. And there are also going to be a couple links to some other videos as well. The main link though in the middle you will see will be the one that goes to all the rears guides that I've already done. It goes to a main map where you can select the zone on the annotations. Make sure you have annotations turned on. Otherwise you can use the links in the description and that will take you to all the other 56 rares for the achievement of Glorious in the Mist of Pandaria. As always, thanks so much guys and please do take care of yourselves.